A Southeastern Conference basketball season is an epic journey. Over 30 games pressed into a four-month maze of grueling battles. Oh, my! Thrilling moments. Throws up a prayer at the buzzer. Go! And it's not going to go. Put up there! And intense competition. High about the rim. Behind the back pass to Azabuki for the slam. He sealed it for the floor. And now it comes down to the culmination of all the hours spent in the gym. The time where warriors stand tall, where great players become legends, and where all the hard work and effort comes down to who wants the dream more. The dream that grows from the first time a small child meets his first hoop. As the child grows, so grows the dream. Whether it be out behind a barn in the country or on the playground of a buzzing city. Now, heroes of the past and legends of the future will watch as today's players near the pinnacle of their ultimate journey and the dream of being called champions of the Southeastern Conference. Tonight, the quarterfinals pit two underdogs against two SEC powers. Kentucky begins their search for another SEC against Tennessee. A battle of the Tigers is next. LSU meets Auburn. It is now. Two on one. Robinson, what a chance. Goes up a prayer at the buzzer. Go! Georgia Dome in downtown Atlanta as the 2005 SEC basketball tournament presented by Dr. Pepper continues right here on Jefferson Pilot Sports and the first game of our evening session of quarterfinal Friday sees the Tennessee Volunteers two games under 500 taking on the SEC regular season champs and number one seed out of the East the Kentucky Wildcats and they call it Cat Atlanta for a reason this building is dominated by nothing but Kentucky Wildcat fans they just swarm the city they swarm the dome and there is an electricity and an energy in this building that we have yet to see so far in this 2005 tournament. And hello again, everybody. I am Dave Neal, and welcome to our host position. If you can't tell, Kentucky is ready to take the floor. The Wildcats making their opening appearance. Tennessee, a team that won their first game. They've had somewhat of a disappointing season, but they showed some energy, some life last night, and they think that maybe they could pull off this what would be considered a big-time upset. We shall see over the next couple of hours. Well, let's show you our advanced auto parts drive to the SEC Tournament Championship brackets, and Alabama and Florida have moved on. The Crimson Tide knocked off Ole Miss, and Alabama looked mighty sharp this, this morning, this afternoon, I should say, while Florida played perhaps the best game of anybody so far in this tournament, getting past Mississippi State. So that'll be a dynamic semifinal game. And who will be our other semifinal? We will find out over the next four and a half or so hours right here on Jefferson Pilot Sports. And certainly, this has been a tournament dominated by Kentucky over the years. They're looking for their 26th SEC Tournament Championship. And you know, Tubby Smith has won five of these in his seven years. Pretty impressive stuff. What will happen tonight, we will find out in a matter of moments. For more on the game, let's go courtside. Check in with our esteemed announcer, Tim Brando. Timmy? All right, thank you so much, Dave. From a national standpoint, this is the big story. Win out, Kentucky, and you're a number one seed. That quest begins against the Tennessee Volunteers. By my side, Joe Dean Jr. For them to do it, they're going to need Patrick Sparks to have a little spark from down deep. And certainly, Scooter McFadden has had a wonderful opening round. Yeah, Tim, Scooter McFadden is back. 22 points last night against Arkansas. Not only is he a great scorer, his leadership is outstanding for the Volunteers. Tonight, he'll be matched up against Kalina Azabuki. On the other side, Patrick Sparks, one of the best three-point shooters in the country. He's a guy you've got to account for defensively, which opens up things for the Kentucky Bigs. Oh, but there are times when shot selection can be an issue for Tubby. Let's get your Pontiac keys to victory for both. Well, Tim, for Tennessee, they've got to win the battle of the boards. They dominated the boards last night against Arkansas, but tonight, Kentucky, a great rebounding team. Tennessee needs to win that part of the game. The Kentucky Wildcats defensively have got to minimize Scooter McFadden. They held him seven earlier this year in Knoxville. We got a great matchup here tonight, Timmy. A lot of energy in this building. Yes, and it is a border rivalry like the Hatfields and McCoys. Tennessee builds a bigger building. 
game just so they can handle Kentucky. You better have a presence tonight against the Big Blue. The tip is next. An SEC basketball tournament is being brought to you by Dr. Pepper. By Pontiac. By Safe Auto Insurance. By Bell South. And by Sitco. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. And the decibel level has pumped up just a bit. The mighty Wildcats fresh off their 43rd SEC regular season championship come in for the conference tournament finals. Let's take a look now at your safe auto insurance starting lineups. Freshman of influence, Chris Lofton, for the last two weeks, he's really carried this team, waiting for McFadden to get hot, and he's done that. C.J. Watson, Brandon Crump, who's healthy again, and Andre Patterson. This may be as healthy as Buzz Peterson's team has been. For Kentucky, Rajan Rondo, a freshman that knows how to penetrate, has outstanding sense of the game, and of course knows how to pass to Patrick Sparks, which is important. Randolph Morris, another inside player that's made a difference. Kalina Azabuki and Chuck Hayes, a member of the SEC first team. And you start talking about being outstanding. He is uh, truly what it's all about in intercollegiate athletics. Chuck Hayes is a first team all SEC player. Now, for what's heard around the Gatorade cooler, let's go to Dave Baker. Hey, Timmy B., good evening. The talk around the cooler tonight is what does Kentucky do about one of its native sons? Chris Lofton, who you mentioned, has played so well for Tennessee. Buzz Peterson said he thought the key last night was that Arkansas concentrated solely on taking Lofton away. He only had eight points. But, ah, look what Scooter McFadden did, 22. He didn't play when the balls played so well up in Lexington a few weeks ago. One other Kentucky note, end of the U.K. practice yesterday in Lexington before they came to Atlanta. Rajon Rondo sprains an ankle. An observer said he was writhing in pain on the floor, but that observer added he doesn't have a real high tolerance for pain. We'll see how he goes here <laughs> early on. Sounds like somebody really close to the uh, Kentucky program <laughs> that never gives an inch. There's Tubby Smith. What a remarkable job in seven prior seasons. He's won five of these tournaments and, of course, has a national championship to boot in his opening season back in 98. And uh, you touched on uh, Buzz. I think uh, maybe some pressure lifted off him, and he can relax a bit, and his team seems to be playing with the kind of fire that was missing all season long. Tim, there's no problem with the talent level of Tennessee. There's good players here, but they've got to bring their A game every night, and certainly they've got to have it tonight against one of the top five teams in the country in Kentucky. Our officials, Tom Lopes, Bruce Benedict, and Doug Sermons. Sparks with the duck down. Hayes finding Rondo. There's that penetration we were talking about. And a foul spotted. It'll go against C.J. Watson with the hand check. Well, they decided to double-team Hayes in the post. He kicked it out. On the closeout, Watson came out too far. He needs to, to close out short on Rondo and give Rondo a chance to prove he can make the outside shot. Well, you mentioned what Tennessee has to do during the A game. They need to make outstanding judgments during the course of the game. I think it's important when you see players give up cheap fouls, and that's another one by Watson. He and Crump, I mean, this is uh, not the way you want to start. Dane Bradshaw is going to have to come in. Watson is a guy who leads the conference in assists. He's a tremendous player, and they need him on the floor. Yeah, that's that's a devastating uh, situation right there with Watson. But defensively, two breakdowns right off the bat. You close out long, you get beat on the dribble, and you don't reach in defensively. It's what you teach. Move your feet. I used to say at the Dixie basketball camp, Tim, move your feet and don't get beaten. Do not use your hands defensively. The officials will always call that reach in. Randolph Morris. We start talking about influential freshmen. He's certainly one of them out of Landmark Christian here in Atlanta, Georgia. I really believe, Tim, this game is going to be won in the paint by the big people. Whoever gets the job done inside, scoring in the lane, and rebounding the basketball will win this game tonight. Losing Watson means Kentucky can pressure early. And they're taking advantage of it right now. I mean, they, they can go right after Bradshaw, right after Lofton. And Buzz Peterson. 
Peterson knows it. Yeah, what Buzz Peterson is saying, there's three guys on you. If you can get it out of the trap, we've got two on one at the basket. McFadden couldn't handle it. Nice, aggressive play by Kentucky. We talked last night, Tim, about the fact that the, mark, the, the, the knock on Tennessee is they play soft from time to time. Kentucky's really coming after him here with the pressure defense. Looking for that early knockout, it was C.J. Watson with two quick fouls in less than 30 seconds. Advantage Kentucky. Trump lost it. Azubuki takes it away. Hayes with the dump down. Tipped away by Trump. And here comes McFadden. A whirling dervish, but it's taken away by Hayes. No one will outwork Chuck Hayes. Ronda, what a pass! Azubuki! And that gets Catalina hopping. Chuck Hayes made that play with the tremendous strip. Diving on the floor, maintaining possession, led to the fast break dunk by Azabuki. The big blue come to this building thinking this is ours. No one can take it. Bradshaw in and out of the hoop. Rondo taking it back the other way. An easy lane and a timeout. Tennessee and Buzz Peterson in the face of his volunteers again. Well, that, that look right there says it all for Buzz Peterson. We talked about last night early in the game, Tennessee giving up too many drives to the lane defensively. First thing in transition, stop the basketball. Rondo smart. He drove it all the way. There's the play before. The great assist by Rondo. And Kalina Azabuki out of Tulsa. Timmy plays a little stufferino in the dome. Those passes, uh, when you make bounce passes from a diagonal point of view, that, that tells you how good your guard really is. No question about it. And Rondo doesn't play like a freshman. He's one of the top steals leaders in the SEC. Has been the... A, a leader on the floor as a freshman for this team, plays with a lot of confidence, and his teammates have confidence in him. I think one of the um, aspects of tonight's game for a lot of Tennessee fans, and much has been made of the situation Buzz Peterson has in with his administration. Here comes more pressure from Kentucky, another near turnover. Does Tennessee continue to compete? And uh, Buzz is reacting to Bruce Benedict's call that it is a turnover, out of bounds to the Big Blue. Tennessee needs to maintain a high level of competition for Buzz Peterson tonight. No question about it. They need to be competitive in this game. I would agree. But Kentucky is bringing the pressure. Tennessee has got to find a way to break that down and shoot a layup at the other end. Hayes leaves it for Sparks on the wing. Rebound taken off the deck by Bradshaw. C.J. Watson, if you just joined us, got two fouls before you could say hello. Bradshaw all the way to the rack, and he gets it over Mars for the first bucket for the balls. Better than two minutes deep. That was nice by Bradshaw. He jumped into the shot blocker. Mars took away his, his space there for the block and laid it in. And now Tennessee is back to a 2-3 zone. As the Duke. Kabuki's game that has really improved the last three years at Kentucky. That outside shot looking more and more like a shooter for the Wildcats. Well, that zone that worked against Arkansas probably won't deliver the goods tonight. McFadden rejected but fouled. Morris got a hand in there. Good look in the eye there by McFadden. He had, had that competitive look when he drove it. Watch him right down into your living room. Look at it. Look at his face. Determination. He's taking it right to the rim at the big guys. That's the kind of leadership that Scooter McFadden needs to bring tonight for the Tennessee Volunteers. He's going to have to get to the line. Yes. And, and uh, he's an 82% free throw shooter on the season. 91 last year. At the very least, get to the strike, force Kentucky's bigs to perhaps make a play, right. make the officials determine whether you get to the line or not. You can't be afraid of shot blockers. You've got to attack shot blockers and put pressure on them. Well, I look at today's game played in the ACC, Joe, by Clemson against North Carolina. I mean, they went right at yep. their big, and they were a prohibitive underdog, just as Tennessee is tonight. I mean, you got to believe in yourself against teams like this. Absolutely, Tim. you got to be the aggressor and show them that you're not afraid to take it to the goal. And he's working over front. Starks gets the loose ball. 
Jameer Hendricks into the game. Out of bounds, off his knee. And it belongs to Kentucky. Speaking of uh, games played earlier today, let's take a quick look at the Infinity scoreboard. Wake up early in a huge game for North Carolina State. They need a win to get into the NCAAs. West Virginia has done well so far in the Big East Tournament, working their way in. Michigan State and Iowa also underway in the Big Ten. Zabuki, the jump stop, too strong. Look at him stay with it. Literally just took the ball right out of Scooter McFadden, McFadden's hands to lay it in. Azabuki showing his strength right there. Lofton. Brandon Crump needs to get some offense inside. McFadden not there. Hendricks has it taken away by Chuck Hayes. Sparks. Leaves it for Corona as a rookie. He has 10 of Kentucky's 13. Bradshaw hounded by Rondo. Tennessee just looking to get to the television timeout. Trying to survive at this point. They've taken a huge first punch from the Big Blue. They let them play inside, Tim. A lot of bumping. Nobody back. And now Bud has to take the timeout. This is his worst nightmare. Buzz Peterson talking to Dane Bradshaw right there. He's the point guard. He has got to be the basket protector when they go inside. You see him talking to him right there. He got caught at the half court line and didn't find Randolph Morris sneaking behind him for the easy snowbird layup. That is unacceptable defensively for Tennessee. And as a hoop, he's so very strong to the hoop here. Yeah, he misses it. Watch him just take the ball right away from McFadden. The strength of Azabuki, the all-SEC performer for the Wildcats, setting the tone early for the Big Blue with his three-point shooting and his aggressive play. Do you remember the way Keith Bogan played his senior year after he'd had a difficult junior season? He reminded me of Bogan's. Yeah, right, right there. there. Yeah. Uh, Bogan's had the disappointing junior year, but came back with, with uh, great energy as a senior and was the SEC Player of the Year that year. Before the ballots came out, uh, uh, Joe, before the ballots came out, you had to struggle really to think from Kentucky who would be a first-team All-SEC player. Chuck Hayes, an understandable choice. And uh, finally, Scooter McFadden answers the bell from deep, 15 to 7, as he hits his first triple. McFadden will do a lot of scoring tonight for, for Tennessee, but if Tennessee's going to pull an upset here, they have got to find a way to get some baskets around the goal in the lane area. That's where Crump, Hendricks, Wingate come in. Rondo, not there. Crump clears it. And in transition. C.J. Watson back on the floor. You see how important he is to come in, play with two fouls. Let's face it, he's a veteran. Yeah, they got to take some chances. Absolutely. Yeah. He's smart. He, 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 you know as a basketball player, you know what you can and can't do defensively. And when you're in foul trouble, how you have to play. Watson's a smart player. Gives a pick. Watson leaving it for Hendricks, but a tough pass. Not the kind of pass you want to make that close to the hoop. Four turnovers now committed by Tennessee. And they paid duty. Morris right past Hendricks. Great hollow action right there by Kentucky. Chuck Hayes comes high. Morris is isolated. Fronted in the post. Hayes simply just threw the lob right over the top for an easy layup. That's great execution of the hollow offense for Tuffy Smith's team. Crump has really not gotten involved. He sets a high pick there for Lofton. And on the roll, the poor pass again leads to another turnover. That's five. Rondo again. No one stops him. Count it and a foul. McFadden gets it. Horrible defense by Tennessee. Just no excuse for that to happen. None whatsoever. The best of the conference is presented by Chevrolet, the new Chevrolets, an American Revolution. Single game field goals in SEC tournament history. That's a heck of a group led by Melvin Turpin in 84. 
Melvin Turpin also holds the record for most Big Mac eaten in one night <laughs> in Lexington. He was a large man. Yeah. Heck of a player, though. Seeing Reggie King up there reminds me of C.M. Newton when he was coaching, of course. Uh, the athletic director most responsible for the success of Kentucky in the modern era. He brought in Patino. Yep. And then he brought in Tubby Smith. That's a pretty good legacy. And, oh, by the way, he was part of the Fabulous Five back in the early 50s, which won a couple of national championships. He's been part of a lot of great success, C.M. Newton, at the University of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. After, uh, as they say, uh, cutting his teeth at Transylvania. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know of anyone in the uh, in the Southeastern Conference that's done more at every level of individual athletics than CMU. And, and that's why he's in the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame, Jim. I mean, we're talking about a past administrator. He's now operating as a consultant for the SEC on a part-time basis, making his home back in Alabama. Coached at Alabama, coached at Vanderbilt, and. Um, the director of athletics at Kentucky, and uh, as I said, so responsible, past tournament for chairman of the NCAA. Yeah, he's done it all, there's no question. His influence on basketball in the South has been uh, remarkable. And across the country, yes. With Fadden blowing by Bradley, Ramel Bradley just into the game, and Hayes will have none of it. He's like the uh, stop sign when you get to the paint. Now Hayes does all the little things. He blocks out, rebounds, dives on the floor. He'll score a few points as well. I think Azubuki got caught with a uh, moving pick that time. So Kalina picks up his first. Look at the numbers in the paint. Now you can just feel Kalina Azubuki starting to become the main man at Kentucky. Yes, Chuck Hayes is a great player and made the all NCC team. But Kalina Azubuki is that guy who, who is all of a sudden starting to step up and becoming a star for the Wildcats. Could you make a case that he was a first-teamer as much as Hayes? Well, he made first-team by the coaches. Yeah. I uh, was surprised he didn't make it in the Associated Press. I was. Wingate into the game, giving it up to McFadden. Watson strong to the hoop, playing with two fouls. Got him in 19 seconds. And finally, a reach-in foul against Kentucky underneath. Last night, as I mentioned, Tennessee out-rebounded Arkansas 42-23 42 by 19. Jameer Hendricks, a young man at the line, and Major Wingate were a big part of that. Came in off the bench and gave Tennessee a lot of strength and energy in the lane area, and they need to do that tonight against Kentucky, who, along with Mississippi State, are the two top rebounding teams in the league. During halftime of tomorrow's second semifinal game, which we'll have for you, we'll bring you the Dr. Pepper $1 million shootout. One lucky fan will try to win $1 million in Evan Root High Performance Motor and Ranger Boat, and along with other great prizes. Robbie Moss, by the way, got that foul for Kentucky, the junior from Hopkinsville, KY, just into the game. He, along with... Uh, Lukasz Udzu, the uh, Polish youngster that's uh, growing leaps and bounds day by day in uh, Lexington, Kentucky. Well, Bradley, a runner, stays with it. Yet again, an offensive rebound in the painted area over Tennessee's defense. Yeah, the games I've had Kentucky this year, Ramel Bradley has played extremely well. Very quick, a lot like Rondo, but a better shooter. Asunu into the game. Off the ball, Orbzut is going to pick up a foul trying to check win game. Now there you see Ramel Bradley, and again, no block out right there. Yep. On Bradley, kicks right back to him. He knocks it in. Well, that, that, that shot from our... Our camera above the rim, that's courtesy of Kia, just told you that Major Wingate failed to block out. Exactly. Absolutely, that replay told you exactly why there was a putback for a guard. A lot of breakdowns already in this uh, ball game for Tennessee on the defensive end. And we talked in the open about how important rebounding would be tonight for the Volunteers. This is a critical stage in this game, right? Ab absolutely. Tennessee does not offer a challenge in the next five minutes. Uh, the big blue will be on cruise control. And a nice finger roll by Stanley Asunu, the junior from Houston, Texas. Asunu is a guy with a lot of energy. That's what you want to bring off the bench of Orzu. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. With the left hand. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> 24 to 9. They bring that off of the bench. And as we said, he's getting better all the time for Kentucky. Look at that. 62%, that says it all. Kentucky, and again, Rodney Moss contesting Chris Lofton. Kentucky so far has shut Lofton down completely. and get no looks.
24 to 9, a 15 point bulge already. Perry is rejected by Wingate. And yet another step in, out of bounds, as touched by Moss, so Tennessee will have it out of bounds at midcourt when we return. The knockout punch may be coming Buzz Peterson's way. They've got to answer. We'll be back. SEC Tournament Basketball 2005 here in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> it is what it is, folks. Only when Arkansas challenged the Big Blue in the 90s did this place have a different color. Uh, and now that Arkansas is in transition with a new coach, it's as if uh, the rest of this conference has said, okay, the stage is yours again, Kentucky. And to be perfectly honest with you, as a longtime follower of basketball in this conference, that should be a source of embarrassment to some of the other fans of the other schools. I don't think there's any question about it. Uh, the culture in the Southeast, for some reason, it's, it's just not uh, basketball-oriented, although we play great basketball in the Southeast. No question. Perry lost it. Loose ball. Out of bounds. If Kentucky wanted a whistle, they're not going to get it. They're going to get a travel, and the ball goes the other way. Nissan is in the drive to sell a million vehicles, so you can get great offers on 2005 Nissan. See your Nissan dealer now. Nissan's uh, drive to a million sales event going on now through March 31st. Look at that. Kentucky has made more field goals than Tennessee has attempted. That, that's unbelievable right there. It's as if uh, you could pick your stats. And right now, it's total domination for Kentucky. And the thing that you'd really like to see from the Volunteers, because, hey, they won a game last night. There's no reason to be tight. They should be loose. They should be enjoying the opportunity. Crump, Brandon Crump has got to be a guy that, that gives Tennessee some, some help. Right there, he caught it in the post. Turn and face your man and try to drive him to the goal. Put some pressure on him. Dribbled once and picked it up and then threw it out of bounds. That's not the kind of play that Brandon Crump is capable of. And this experience should be fun for Tennessee. Bradley missed an open chippy. Beautiful pass, too, from Moss. Watson takes it right past Orbsy. Cannot finish. Crawford just into the game with a rebound. Kentucky's made wholesale substitutions and has not skipped a beat. Yeah, all of the starters are on the bench for Kentucky. Five reserves in the game, and you're right, Tim. They want this to beat. That's one of the strengths of this Kentucky team is the, the depth of the squad. Moss trying to take it right at his man, and the foul is committed by the Sumner. Tennessee fouls into the scoreboard. That's a heck of a big game there. North Carolina State trying to win their way in. Chris Paul not playing, suspended. Those two played last Sunday. And Paul suspended for a full game. Memphis, uh, but how, what a story that would be to win on their home floor. They would not get in the tournament if they didn't win the yeah. Conference USA tournament title. And they may get it. They've got Louisville in the final. Or we'll have Louisville if they hold on in that game. Well, they beat UAB earlier today. And by the way, Memphis embarrassed Louisville earlier this year. Louisville got them back on Memphis's home floor a little more than a week ago. Now, there are a lot of that large teams that are really scared of what John Calipari's team might do. Absolutely. As Memphis beat Louisville badly in Freedom Hall earlier this year, which shows the kind of team they can beat. Bobby Moss. And again, look at Kentucky pound the offensive boards. Perry staying with it. Trump did reject it. Moss again. Oh, the iron on pound. Pulled down by Tennessee's McFadden. Well, that shooter's touch, you had a thought that it might go in. <laughs> Bounce around. These are somewhat soft rims here in the Georgia Dome, particularly for Kentucky. Yes. <laughs> you look at their record. Patterson can't hit. Crump trying to stay with it, but Crawford pulls it out of there. Crawford went right over the back of Crump to get that rebound. Perry. Doesn't get it to fall. McFadden has numbers. Assume we're hitting. That's a hoop and a little hand. Much to the chagrin of Tubby Smith. That's the kind of aggressiveness that Tennessee has to have by everybody on the team. Scooter McFadden trying to give his team some life and some energy. Look at him. He's gonna not going to be denied. He's going all the way to the rim. Slides away from the charge. Excellent play. And he's just, he is trying to motivate his teammates to say, come on, guys, get on my back. Let's start taking it to the big blue. Rams didn't like the call, but in truth, it was an excellent call. It was a step down by Bradley. A definite step in, and he was also underneath the hoop. 
was a big three-point play right there by McFadden. Let's see if that energizes the Tennessee balls a little bit. But they've got to do it on the defensive end and on the backboard as we've talked. Well, they went for the alley-oop, but it was deflected by Watson, and Dane Bradshaw comes out of there with it. Watson, too strong. McFadden tries to tap it out. It goes into Morris's hand. Here's it to Rondo. Brock going after Hayes. Chuck stays with it. Leaves it for Morris. And a reach-in foul spotted against Brandon Crump. That's number one against him. I am seeing a bit more aggression from Crump. Uh, in the last couple Tennessee seasons. Working harder on the defense against Still is yet to score a point. He had 16 last night in the win over Arkansas. He's the inside threat for Tennessee. Been dry now. This team has been dry with a big blue for the last three and a half minutes. Morris. Panic and a foul. Andre Patterson picks up the personal and yet again. Hayes gets the uh, the garbage basket. Well, the Tennessee, Tennessee defensive rotation is just not there. You, everybody's standing and watching the basketball instead of sliding down to the baseline and cutting off those passes. But let's give Kentucky credit. Excellent passing team. Typical Tubby Smith team. Very unselfish. I don't know that there's a better position basketball player than Chuck Hayes. I mean, he gets to the right position yep. on every sequence offensively. Very smart player is Chuck Hayes. To knows where his teammates are and, and an excellent passer for a big power guy. Bradshaw trying to run it down, lost it out of bounds. The big blue by 15. They took command from the outset. Buzz Peterson had to call a shock treatment timeout before we got to the television timeout. And uh, not much has changed with the exception of Kentucky's lineup. Big Blue did go cold for three and a half minutes, but they still have matched their largest lead. There's the high-low. This time, Morris tries to feed Hayes. Sparks. All the way across the end to Rondo. Bradshaw clears. Watson fires to Patterson, trying to go reversal. <laughs> it lingered on the 10 and finally dropped in. Right back at you, Rondo is down. No excuse for that. I just, I'm, you know, I hate to keep beating the dead horse, Tim, but defensively, you've made a field goal at one end, and you're going to let the other team's guard drive it all the way to the lane, uncontested. That cannot happen if you're going to win this game. Some open, but for the most part, all of the production coming from Kentucky. He lives in Birmingham. I see him periodically, Tim. He comes over to Birmingham Southern and works out with us some. Uh, just an outstanding individual and uh, was a great player for Wim Sanderson's team. By the way, if uh, you watched uh, any of Alabama today, you know just how good they can be when Winston doesn't have his best game. Ernest Shelton will drop 26 on you. I mean, I really do feel that Alabama, LSU, Ron Kentucky, there's no question this Kentucky team can go very deep. It all depends a lot on matchups. But four of the five teams that are desperate for the NCAA tournament, short of Mississippi State, that's still a bit wobbly, getting used to having Winsome Frazier back and, and getting their point guard play uh, into a more consistent uh, situation. Four of the five teams that are going to the NCAAs have a chance to go very deep. I agree. I, I think Florida is another team oh, that's kind of under, under everybody's radar. And that normally Billy Donovan is best when he's kind of the underdog. When you think about it, I think the image nationally of Florida is that they are soft and perimeter oriented. Oh, they're and they're young. Enough. Their young bigs are playing great. Yeah, they're not soft this year. They're a very physical team. Al Horford has brought a lot to the table there. David Lee's playing stronger. And, and you know, again, Matt Walsh and Anthony Roberts are big time shooters. They got Kentucky's attention, that's for sure. Shot clock winding down on McFadden. And then again. Speaking of Pilfer, how about that? Rondo with the takeaway. Hayes, yes and a foul. Rondo's third steal tonight is 73rd of the season. And the youngster that prepped at Louisville Eastern prior to going to Oak Hill made this play happen. Yeah, just threw the defense and watch Hayes draw the contact and use the left hand. <laughs> Strength. You're right, Chuck. The weight room's been good to you, young man. That power move. Look at him. 
looking at those pipes. Well, that's a wonderful finish, but this absolutely happened because of Rondo's uh, steel capability. Absolutely the difference in that play. Well, in the history of Kentucky basketball, the all-time record for steals in a season is 79. And there's the steal by Rondo. That's number 73. He has a chance, if they continue to play, to break that record. That would be incredible. Bradshaw, an extra step, and the wheels have come off quickly for Tennessee. Trying to do a little bit too much by themselves instead of running offense and letting the offense take care of the shots. And the turnovers right there, nine is by Tennessee, way too many against a very good Kentucky team. Ten points off of them. The game would be a lot closer where the volunteer was able to hold on to the ball offensively. Morris, a turnaround. Wingate clears for Tennessee. Those two early fouls by Watson set a very bad tone for the Volunteers. Kentucky just turned up the pressure, and uh, they've been relentless since. That's what you could say is the turning point of the game. The two quick fouls on the opening possession. Right off the bat. 19 seconds in, Watson saddled with two. Wingate. Missed from point blank range, and again. Rondo, a little stutter step, leaving it for Sparks. Hayes in traffic. Rebound to the Volunteers. Numbers here, locked and looking. Missed opportunity. Uh, you, could, you could tell he felt it. Waiting for some defense that wasn't there. Good matchup, Azabuki on McFadden, two good ones. Lost an 0 for 1, Joe. He's only lost one shot. Let the coronation begin. Here's Fox. I mean, we've got more than five minutes left in the opening half. Yeah. And Kentucky has said, you know what? This is ours. You can't have it. We're going to be a number one seed. Yeah, they just... Uh, they look great. There's no question about it. They came to play. They've got the fan support in this building. There's probably 15,000 Kentucky fans here tonight. They love their team, support them like nobody else in America. Hayes picked up that foul. Crump comes back into the game. Wingate sits down. Bradshaw also leaves. So it's Patterson, McFadden, Lofton. Hard to believe McF <laughs> Lofton's only thrown up one shot. Watson triggers it in to Scooter McFadden. Crump has only attempted one shot. Lofton attempted one, Crump one. That's amazing. They've got to get Crump going. Lofton, too. But, you know, Lofton can be defended because he's a perimeter guy. Another pick. This one by Hayes. He deflected it. Sparks. <laughs> a little good trotter move. And this has become an embarrassment to Tennessee. Well, Tim, when you start throwing between the leg passes in the first half, you know that this thing's already out of hand. And Patrick Sparks is, is like he's on the playground just having some fun. I mean, watch this. This is insult to injury right here. Oh, that's that's, that's my, insult to injury. That's Muhammad Ali yeah. toying with Floyd Patterson. I mean, right there. Look at that. No contest. Yeah, he's just having some fun right there. Pouring a little salt on the wounds. Kicking them when they're down. You know, if I'm Tennessee and I see that, I'm going after them. I'm telling you. But, hey, let's give credit where credit's due. The Kentucky Wildcats playing on all cylinders tonight. Tubby Smith's got them ready. They look like the number one seed. Yeah, they tonight. do. Yeah. yeah. They've got something to prove. Don't forget, coming up, our next matchup, Auburn of the Upstart Tigers, playing generally only six guys and none over 6'6", taking on the Fighting Tigers of LSU with the player of the year, Brandon Bass, in the Southeastern Conference, and that sophomore was deserving of that honor. Absolutely. He was my pick all the way. I, I had a chance to watch him twice against Mississippi State, outplayed last year's player of the year, Lawrence Roberts. Brandon Bass, in my, in my opinion, was clearly the player of the year in the, in the league this year. We'll see about the Tennessee's pulse, what, what's in that heart in the remaining moments of this half in the second half. Watson knocks down his first three. Well, this, this is becoming a pride issue right now for Tennessee, Tim. Let's forget about winning and losing. Let's just talk about pride and, and playing competitive spirit, all of those kinds of things that we talk about in athletics. Hey. 
Rodriguez. Rejected. Nice work defensively by Patterson. A lot of body, but some weather, too. Trump left free. That's his second shot. And he finally gets one to fall through from deep. A couple of big threes right now. Giving Tennessee some light. Sparks up top. And a shooter's touch for the transfer from Western Kentucky. I think the critics now know he can play at this level. So many thought, oh, well, you're playing uh, at that level. We don't know if you can make it through the Southeastern Conference. Hello. You know what he proves to them, to, to all young players out there? If you can shoot the basketball, I mean, really shoot it, there's a place for you on any team in the country. Watson off the bounce. Inside the arc. A catch for two. Kentucky by 17 with three minutes remaining in the opening half. Dave Neal will be coming up at halftime. We'll bring you up to date on all of the news and notes. Highlights of today's SEC tournament and beyond. Morris baseline extended. 41-22. Well, that young man knows how to score. <laughs> He's gotten a lot better. Every, every, every location around the lane. I think it was a confidence thing with him early. He's really picked it up. He's been the season with Chuck Hayes, and we'll figure this thing out. Oh, that's a great Rondo with a little push against C.J. Watson. You know, one of the other points about the Kentucky team is the depth. They have great practices, very competitive practices, which help them improve. Patrick does have some sparks. Oh, and the iron kind in Catlanta. Our above-the-rim view of the 2005 SEC Tournament is courtesy of Kia. And a uh, panoramic view from that uh, rim. It's even effective when we don't have uh, any action. And there you see how it works. Uh, and by the way, Joe, um, we did get some, some footage. It was It's on the market now. It's black market footage. But we got it of you last night with that above-the-rim <laughs> camera. <laughs> I just wonder I if it's that, on eBay now. I wonder how that Actually, thing moves. <laughs> There's Shigari Aline, his first action, Joe, yeah. uh, in almost a month. I had some Kentucky fans ask me today uh, in the hotel, was he even here on the trip? Yeah. And I actually saw him walk through the hotel this morning, so I knew he was here, but didn't realize he would play. He's, he's, they've had some uh, problems with him. Uh, I think somewhat academic. Yes, missing uh, meetings missing with tutors and classes the and yeah. things like that. It's, it's more of a little disciplinary thing. And I think that this uh, Southeastern Conference Tournament really gives Tubby Smith an opportunity to get him back right. into the floor, get some chemistry working before they get into the NCAA. You know, early in the season, he was really playing well off oh, the bench. He's he was a, a difference maker yeah. in some games. He's blocked 40 shots this year. He's a, you know, tallest player in UK history at seven foot three. Jamel Bradley came up empty. Here's Watson right over him. Not there. And Aline clears it to Sparks. Forty-one, twenty-four, 24 155 and counting. Carrier's coming to the game as well. Josh Carrier out of Bowling Green, Kentucky. Everyone getting into the act for this very deep Kentucky team. Thomas turns it over with steps. Jeray Thomas, sophomore from Montreal, Quebec. Well, coming up at halftime, we'll have analysis, highlights, stats, and more. That's coming up at the break, presented by Alabama Tourism. <laughs> Lofton again, another one of those offensive players that needs to get involved. And as if on cue, his first bucket, only his second shot taken tonight. Now yeah, a good smart play by Lofton there because they are going to crowd him on the perimeter. You know, he's the number one three-point shooter in the league, so he does a nice job taking it to the basket. Sparks. I mean, I don't know how you allow him to take that shot. He's a guy you've got to take out of their office. Yeah, I mean, I, you, you'll have a tr you have problems with maybe Hayes and Morris, even Rondo penetration. But Sparks is a guy that could be defended, but you got to stay with him. Another step into the passing lane by Sparks. Numbers on the wing. Count. Ramel Bradley was standing on the right wing with his hands ready, his knees bent, because he knew that Sparks was coming to him with the basketball. Great teaching job by Tubby Smith and his staff of, of penetrating and kicking it out. 
Bates has been an absolute blitzkrieg in the opening half. And a nice shooter's touch. Juwan Smith just into the game. His first bucket, freshman from Decatur, Tennessee. 47 to 29. Russ Peterson looking for any help he can get late in this half. And the timeout taken by the Wildcats as they'll draw up one final play with 13.2 remaining. Patrick Sparks on the ball screen. Just nobody steps out to hedge on him. When he comes off a ball screen, you better get out there on him. And then to the lane, kick out. Ramel Bradley knocks it down. Great job by Patrick Sparks. Two big baskets for the big blues. Four assists in the first half for Sparks. So he's been living up to his advance ability. And you gotta, you got to love the fact that he doesn't try to force anything, Tim. He lets the offense come to him. He knows he's on a great team. Uh, he shoots it when he's open. He passes it when he's not. And uh, he's a very heady player. Sparks. The announcers for tonight's game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. Any use of our broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. It was deflected out of bounds by Tennessee, so Kentucky will quickly back in with 11 seconds remaining. I think the second half and uh, the halftime conversation from Buzz Peterson will be about pride. Don't you? Absolutely. Time winding down for McFadden at the buzzer. That won't count. It came too late. Kentucky shot 50%, had 10 steals, took the game away about 19 seconds deep when C.J. Watson picked up his second foul, and they have not looked back as they try to make a statement in search of a number one seed in next week's NCAA by virtue of dominating the Southeastern Conference Tournament for the sixth time in eight years. Let's go to Dave Baker. Tubby, I can't imagine a scenario that would have been any better for you in terms of the way your team played the first half. Well, you know, they got in some foul trouble there early. Watson got him in foul, and that took some of their ball handling. You can see what he's yes. capable of doing, but we got off. Kalina got us started, making shots, attacking the basket, and we were able to get in our press. When you're making shots, you can get up and pressure the ball. Great intensity. Best of luck second half, Tubby. All right, that's Tubby Smith. He heads to the locker room, and his Kentucky Wildcats lead the Tennessee balls by a count of 47 to 29. Dave Neal's back with our halftime activities right after this. S and Pilot Financial by Advance Auto Parts by Sonic Drive-Ins by Cooper Tires by your local Toyota dealers and by Geico. Starters on the floor for both teams as we're ready for action. 47-29 at halftime. Kentucky with the lead. Tim Brando alongside Joe Dean Jr., Dave Baker. Along the sidelines, our thanks to Dave Neal and uh, Barry Booker for a job well done at halftime. First of two tonight, LSU and Auburn to follow in our second quarterfinal matchup of the evening session. Most coaches say, Tim, that the first five minutes of the second half sets the tone for the rest of the game. We'll see if Tennessee can cut into this league, lead and show some toughness and some energy against this great Kentucky team. Watson driving on Randolph Morris, decides to go fade away. Patterson on the offensive board, stays with it, and the foul spotted inside. It'll go against Chuck Hayes. Right off the bat, tough shot by Tennessee, but nice job. Patterson getting to the weak side of the board, getting that offensive rebound to maintain possession for Tennessee. You see the four cross here on the out of bounds. McFadden. Well, that's a big three to get them going. He has 11. Well, that, you have to start somewhere. Yeah. You can see that Buzz Peterson is trying to inspire his team as best he can. You well, we can be sure he had some choice words for these young men at halftime. And I guarantee a lot of it centered around just simple, old-fashioned pride and, and competitive spirit. Well, that's what Tennessee has got to show here. Well, we talked about it a little bit last night. As you see Morris again, another layup. 
too easy. Yep. But I mean, it comes down to one thing. You don't want to have to coach effort this deep into any season. I don't care who you are great point. or where you coach. No, that's a great point, Tim. You're, you're right on it. And again, we mentioned last night, Tennessee played great last night against Arkansas, but they're, they're still 14 and 16 overall, and there's a reason for that, and we're seeing some of that tonight. C.J. Watson drops in at three. He has 10, 49-35. Kentucky got it up to 20 in the opening half. Here's Sparks. You can't trade baskets with these guys. Sparks has such great rotation on his ball. Just a tremendous shooter. Nice job by Watson. Driving it hard to the goal. And the foul will go against Kentucky. LBJ taking it to the hoop hard. Second it's Rajon Rondo. Rajon, uh, freshman from uh, Louisville. We mentioned uh, Oak Hill Academy. He crossed Louisville Eastern prior to his move uh, to Oak Hill. Yet another of those uh, many All-Americans that is a playmaking machine for this Kentucky team. Uh, Oak Hill Academy has been somewhat of a uh, training ground, if you will, for Kentucky players. Jules Kamara, Ron Mercer, Keith Bogans, Cliff Hawkins, recent Wildcats that have come out of that program. 12 in the game for Watson as the coach of the year, Tubby Smith, looks on as counterpart. Buzz Peterson trying to find a few answers. As a bookie, a pull-up. Oh, he looks good, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He really looks good. He's strong. He's uh, within himself, not forcing things. He's really becoming a leader along with Chuck Hayes of this Kentucky team. Victory Christian would be proud of him in Tulsa, Oklahoma. There are some uh, ties to Tulsa on the benches tonight. Both coaches have uh, been past coaches of the Golden Hurricane. You'd say one of the cradle of coaches in college basketball locations would be Tulsa. Sparks. Patterson trying to rip down the rebound, lost it out of bounds. Kentucky does such a nice job of pushing the ball in transition and looking for the shooters out on the wings. We've seen that throughout this game. That time Sparks with a wide open look. Tennessee in defensive transition has got to sprint, find those guys, and get in their face. As a bookie. Rebound to Watson. Quite three minutes gone by, Kentucky by 17. They're 47 at halftime. It's their second best output in the first 20 minutes of the entire season. The Cadden and air ball. Cage clears for Kentucky. Rondo. Boy, just glides yeah. down the floor. So does Azabuki. Oh, the iron tantalizingly kind, and it's 56 to 37. You love a player who can score inside and out, and Azabuki, with the size of six foot four, can do just that. Give C.J. Watson some credit. With the early foul difficulty, he continues to go right back into the teeth of the Kentucky defense. Well, Rondo made that play by getting to the lane with the ball, and Azabuki just, again, showing his aggressiveness and his strength, taking it right to the basket. Watch him just jump over Crump, who's six foot ten, and laid it in. C.J. Rondo picking up his third foul. We're talking about that first half for Kalina Azabuki. Yeah, on the break right there, the, the flush from Rondo, the three-point shot. He made two of these early that got Kentucky off and going. When you talk about a complete basketball player, that's what we've seen tonight from Kalina Azabuki. The outside shot, running the break, taking the ball to the basket, scoring over the big people. Watson has the last seven points for the Volunteers. 56 to 39, Kentucky. 14 apiece for Azabuki and Watson. Tennessee zoning right now, just trying to find some answers defensively. I don't believe Kentucky's taken a shot in the second half that's not been inside five feet. Yeah, they get the ball, getting the ball to the lane extremely well. Against the zone that time, they penetrated, kicked it baseline, and, and uh, Ramel Bradley just took it right down the baseline and drew the foul, attacking the defense. Patterson picking up the foul out of Washington Prep, of course, transferred from UCLA out of Los Angeles. He now has three, and Wingate's going to have to get into the game. 
for the Volunteers. That's never a good sign. Crump thought he was coming in for him. <laughs> that's never a good sign, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> Wonder if he wanted to come out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's what you uh, think. <laughs> Gee, I, I hate being a cynic, <laughs> but it's curious to note that, that Crump was thinking he was coming in for him. 57-39. Lofton, Sparks up in his grill. Shot just a bit short, taken down by Morris. Well, they're doing a great job defensively on Lofton tonight. Always going to key on the best outside shooter on the team. Lofton being that for the Volunteers. Hayes double leaves it for Morris. Strong to the glass. Went to the left hand, a poor decision. Bradshaw pulls it up. Leaves it for Watson. Well, CJ has had enough paydays in the second half. He has 17. And turn about, turn about is fair play for Tennessee. They've now pushed the ball down. Spot up the shooter. Nice job by the Volunteers that time. Ten of Watson's points have come in the second half. As Abuki throws up a bad shot. Basket here would cut this thing to 13, maybe 12. I think that found a way to get it in C.J. Watson's hands. There he is, and on the switch, it's Azabuki that's checking it. Lofton over Sparks. There we go. Well, they're going to need a little more of that. Off the triple, it's a 57-45 game, and Buzz Peterson's team showing a little light. There we go, hanging around a little bit. Starting to execute better. Changing defenses here into the zone. Slowing the catch down just a bit. Largest lead for Kentucky was 22. Sparks against three. Trump the rebound. Tennessee dodged a bullet right there. Sparks wide open against that zone. Watson off the bounce. He's feeling it. And cut it into single digits. That's incredible. Timeout, Kentucky. Tennessee's bench is alive now, Timmy. There's the one Tennessee fan. No, just, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> you think for the SEC football championships they had a few more Tennessee fans? Uh, I think so. <laughs> Watson with 13 of the last 16. Geico College Basketball Campus Tour has made its final stop of the season right here at the SEC Basketball Tournament. Be sure to visit the 25 greatest college basketball players of all time exhibit at the Dr. Pepper SEC Fanfare. Caught your uh, your dad's act uh, today as I was leaving the fanfare after I concluded uh, my radio show on Sporting News Radio, and uh, he was conducting the uh, right the press box. The press box. Yeah. And it was wonderful seeing some of the old stars. There you see the scoring run for Tennessee. And by the way, C.J. Watson, three of three from downtown, five of seven. This half, as a team, Tennessee from beyond the arc, oh, being over the back. That is a tough, tough turnover for Tennessee right there. Timmy, they cut it to nine and have the basketball. And you can see the disgust from Buzz Peterson. He's trying harder. Will his team the rest of the way? We'll find out. Presented by Chevrolet, and in tournament history, how about... Rejection Row and uh, Andre Riddick. We remember what a great tournament he had in '93. Shaquille O'Neal, Wayne Shinchius among that uh, that group. I recall Riddick did that in the '93 finals. That particular year, it was held in Lexington. Right. And it was a Kentucky LSU final. And if uh, Kentucky wins and LSU wins tonight, those two could meet in the semifinals tomorrow. Obzu misses one from point blank range, but Hayes doesn't. Chuck Hayes goes right back up with it. Yeah, the rebound is so important. Tennessee got the miss they wanted, but couldn't get the defensive rebound. Chuck Hayes so good on the offensive boards. Well, I think we're going to find out, Joe, if this run by Tennessee to cut it to nine is now an 11 point deficit. We're about to find out if it was Fool's Gold or if, in fact, Tennessee is uh, ready for the challenge on the defensive end. Well, they've cut the lead in half the first six minutes of the second half. Obviously, Buzz Peterson made nice adjustments. They've made five out of seven three-point shots, which has helped. That doesn't hurt. That's right, but you can't miss layups at the other end against Kentucky. As a rookie. Off the back iron, Hayes, another offensive rebound. Just beat one gate to the ball. Bradley. Good block on iron. Yeah, Hendricks with a nice job. Good job. Hendricks played well last night. Watson leaves it for Bradshaw. Lofton for three. 
And that rainbow won't go. Hayes clears it into the hands of Mel Bradley. Eight rebounds for Chuck Hayes. Sparks right to Hayes, stripped by Bradshaw. And that's the kind of defensive help that they really need down low. Don't allow those three backdoor cuts. How good a pass was that by yeah. Patrick Sparks on the bounce in the lane? Well, that's a huge potential win for NC State. Yep, and uh, I believe West Virginia's played their way into the NCAAs, Jerry. I, I, I would agree with that. And Memphis having their way with South Florida. That'll get them into the finals. South Florida upset Cincinnati last night. Big win for their program. That tournament being played in Memphis. So break out the Tigers. They get another shot at uh, Quick Rick's Cardinals in Conference USA Finals. Hayes, a jump hook on the baseline. That was such a great job of recognition by Sparks. Lofton had to switch from Sparks onto Hayes, and they recognized the mismatch and was patient until they could get him the ball. Lofton pumps, and the lead back to 10. Not quite eight minutes deep here into half number two. Tim Brando, Joe Dean Jr., Dave Baker along the sidelines, our host Dave Neal. Number Larry two, Booker will be joining us in game two tonight when Auburn takes on LSU. Hendricks checks out of the game. Ten-point game. Bradley working on Watson. Azabuki over Bradshaw. Long rebound to Dane, and he runs the offense. Kentucky's gone cold a little bit here. Tennessee needs to take advantage and score the basketball when they have these opportunities. They don't come very often right. against the Cats. A little things that's happened to Kentucky at times this year happened in the first game between these two. They get a big lead, and then they have these cold spells. Tennessee got back into that game. Crump is rejected. Bradley looking for some help. That's pretty good help. Hayes, not much lift on that up shot. Kentucky struggling from the floor in this half. They are 6 to 21 for the game, and most of those misses coming in the second half. Good look by Patterson there. Crump just couldn't handle it. Got to make those kind of plays. Kentucky leading here by 10. Lead from 18 to 10, mainly on the three-point shooter of C.J. Watson, who has 13 second-half points. The ball-handling point guard who leads the SEC in assists, knocking down those threes. And off transition, the pass by Bradshaw. Again, he's made three out of four three-point shots in the second half. You see 20 overall, and C.J. Watson trying to put this team on his back and, 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 and bring them back here, Tim. Kentucky's going cold. Tennessee, the last five possessions, has not been able to cut into the lead anymore. You've got to take advantage of those times when Kentucky doesn't shoot the ball well. Drove Crawford has come into the game. You see the three-point shooting story, and it's really pumped some life into these uh, volunteers in this half. Morris misses an easy one. There's Hayes. Again, Chuck Hayes plays position basketball better than any other player I've seen in the country. He exposes himself to the backboard on the shot and knows how to get in through the orange shirts to find those rebounds. Just a nose for the ball. Very bright young man. You know, he reminds me, Joe, of that outstanding Michigan State team that Tom Izzo had that won the national title back in 01. They had a lot of guys that played the game the way Chuck Hayes played it. Yeah, kind of the, the blue collar. Yeah, absolutely. Just doing all the tough things defensively in the low post, getting big offensive rebounds and stick backs. And uh, Tennessee so far not, is not able to have much say about Mr. Hayes. Sparks and uh, Azubuki sit down. Robin Moss is coming to the game along with uh, Rajon Rondo. There's Crump, and again, they've not been able to get him on track. Watson with an ugly shot. Rondo saves it right off of Andre Patterson. Smart play. This tournament telecast featuring Kentucky is brought to you in part by the Kentucky Farm Bureau. And see back man to man. They played zone a, a few possessions. And that's going to be a foul against Rondo. Good call by Bruce Benedict. 
And on top of a great steal by C.J. Watson. <laughs> he also uh, got an arm around Rajon pretty quickly. Did uh, Kentucky. Oh, Bruce just a deflection. That's what you want to try to do. Get your hands in the passing lane. Try to deflect the ball and go get it. Patterson, Watson did that beautifully. I think Rondo took a little exception to uh, Patterson coming up his back after uh, he and Watson were both for the loose ball. Uh, Bruce Benedict picked up on that. You know, as good as Rajon Rondo is, Tim, he's had a great freshman season. I don't think they miss a lot when they bring Ramel Bradley in. No. I really like this young man who is also a freshman from New York City. Lofton unable to hit. And again, Kentucky clamps down on the defensive boards. Bradley comes out of there with it. Morris wants it, finally gets it. There's the quick double. Good job, defensive work by Patterson. Yeah. Got the, got the trap in the low post and then sealed off the baseline behind it to shut off the pass across the lane. That was great defensive execution by Tennessee there. Again, high low into front. And Vice Peterson wanted a foul that time. He's incensed. Bradley rejected. Coming from the blind side, McFadden took it away. And Vice Peterson very upset. I think he may be trying to get a technical here to, to send a message. That was a frustration block right there by McFadden. Well, they've been trying to get Crump involved, Joe. And I think they felt like at the very least we should get to the line on that play. That one's going to belong to Kentucky. Buzz is going to take time to give Doug Sermons a little more of his lip. Right. You see the swarming defense right there. Uh, that's, I agree, that should have been a foul. And the block by Hayes, yeah. probably the foul should have gone early. Buzz obviously doesn't like that, and I think you're right, Tim. He's got a case. Yeah, the, the live shot uh, hits Matt Memorex. It looks very similar to the replay. <laughs> One of the issues, Joe, really, that I think is going to be talked about by the rules committee is, is how to clean up play inside. And, and really, with the rules that are in place today, I think that's the most difficult job for officials across this country it's is like, trying to clean up post play. Yeah, you're right. It's like the, the, the block charge, Tim. It's, you're never going to be able to totally eliminate the physical play around the basket. The players are just too big and strong and athletic nowadays. Yeah. Well, I, every coach that I've talked to across the country has said there's been more contact inside this year than at any other time. But the rules of the game are such that the officials really are in a no-call play-on situation. Trump has his pocket picked out of bounds. It belongs to Tennessee. Trump's got to be tougher with that basketball in a trap situation and get it back out. He's left in Kentucky, stripping from, of the basketball there. And here comes a great trap by Ravi Moss and Morris. Probably should have just called a timeout here instead of allowing Morris to strip you of the basketball. Tennessee got a break right there. Yeah, had he been tied up, the possession arrow was to Kentucky. Only 11 on the shot clock as Watson takes the inbounds back. Leaves it for Crump. And this time the foul is called, and the Kentucky fans are up in arms. <laughs> Chuck Hayes gets his third. You know, no Kentucky fan ever thought their player committed a foul. Really? <laughs> what, what tipped that off? <laughs> uh, uh, Smokey likes it, though. <laughs> Trump only has one field goal tonight. Three points, as you see. Well, that said, though, the statement you made earlier, Joe, you know, they're, they're tough on Tubby. They're tough sometimes on their team, but they are the best of fans. Ooh, are they ever. They love their, their Wildcats. I mean, team. I was over at the fan fair today, and I'm telling you, for every one fan from another school, yeah. I saw 20 Kentucky fans. You know, and we were talking, the one year that Kentucky wasn't in the SEC tournament, uh, Rick Pitino's first year, and I believe it was 90... One yeah, serving sanctions at that yeah. point. The Kentucky fans still came yeah. to the SEC tournament. In Orlando. That's right. Yeah. They still were there because they loved it. They love basketball. I love basketball. <laughs> Again, McFadden trying to get into the passing lane, a near pick. There's, there's so many SEC fans out there, Tim, that are just missing such great entertainment by these schools and these basketball programs in, in the SEC. It's good stuff, Timmy yes, B. Yes, it is. 
Foul is on Crump. Timeout. We've gone better than two and a half minutes without a bucket for either team. The rim view of the 2005 SEC tournament is courtesy of Kia. Well, a classic example of the power of the inside game of Kentucky. Tomorrow, who makes a nice turnaround jump hook, slides off, and look who's there. The big fella, Chuck Hayes, with the offensive board and stick back. Kentucky will beat you in the paint all night if you don't put a body on those big guys yes. inside. We'll see the points in the paint for Kentucky and for the Modesto Mauler, Chuck Hayes, another double-double. 12 points, 10 boards. His ninth double-double of the season is 22nd in his illustrious career at Kentucky. Last field goal for either team came at the 10.42 mark, so it's been three minutes since either team has scratched either uh, on the floor or out the line. Morris in traffic. Well, Sparks actually helped get in his way that time. Not a lot of spacing, but a bailout foul committed by Crump is third. Sparks actually became an extra defender that time. Now, Crump is isolated inside on the big freshman, Randolph Morris, who we've talked about has gotten so much better. He's going to go to the line for one and one, I yes. believe, the 17 foul. And uh, again, Brandon Crump, senior for Tennessee. Big guy. Or actually, really, that was a uh, two shot in the act of shooting. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah, he was taking the ball up. Now, this young man, you mentioned that he's really grown leaps and bounds yeah. in the last month of the season. From an offensive standpoint, especially. Yeah, he's right. To, he's from right here in Atlanta. You've mentioned Tim Landmark Christian High School, so you know he enjoys coming home and playing in this building with a lot of family and friends watching. Well, he left a lot of hardware here. We know that. And a three-time Georgia All-Stater, McDonald's All-America, great All-America. He had it all. The accolades came his way here in Atlanta, Georgia. Patterson underneath, wave it off. He was on the end line. Tough break that time as Patterson made a pretty strong move. I like Andre Patterson, Tim. He's a good-looking athlete. Nice drive attacking the basket. Stepped out right there. That was a good call, but you have to like that. that that's a positive mistake. He's trying to do something positive, and had he not stepped on the line, would have been a nice play. Sparks popping out. C.J. Watson checking in. There's Morris. A good defensive help by Patterson again. Good recognition by Sparks there. Trump stepped out to help on the screen. Morris cut right down the lane and was wide open, but uh, Patterson rotated over nicely to, to cut that off. We've seen better post defense by Patterson tonight in the last, what, I don't know, 10 minutes of this game than we've seen from anyone with Tennessee. Yeah, he played well last night, too. Yeah, he did. There's a bookie in traffic. Leads it to Moss. Shot clock at four. There you go, Brandon. Nice block out by Crump there. Five rebounds for Brandon Crump. Watson on the stop and go. Picks up the blocking call from Robbie Moss. And take a look at our scoreboard, and that's a huge win for Hope Sendek. Punch a ticket, in my opinion. That's a surprise, don't you yeah, think, Tim? No, well, without Chris Paul, and after right, what happened right. last Sunday, a lot of revenge, a lot of payback. Yeah, in I that forgot game. Chris Paul was not playing. But believe me, the uh, NCAA tournament selection committee and the um, amount of points you get for a quality win against a top five team, that's what Wake is. That should help NC State get a bit, especially with all of the teams on the bubble that have lost right. in the last couple of games. Exactly. Vanderbilt being one of them. Yes. And that was a crushing blow last night for Vanderbilt. Watson, a pull-up. Big shot for C.J. Watson, who's had an incredible second half. He has 22. 15 of them in the second half, Joe. Well, he's come to play here in the second half. Good steal there by Patterson. Well, he's got numbers here. Got a score right here. McFadden for three. Not there. Loft in the offensive rebound. Tennessee chose to shoot the three off the break instead of taking it to the basket. You know, I like taking it to the goal, Tim, when you have the numbers. They were three on one there early in that break. There's the pop out. Loft it again. Off the back 10, taken down by Morris. That was a huge sequence. It really was. Two misses right there with a cut the lead to single digits. Again, you've got to take advantage of those opportunities when Kentucky slightly opens that door. 
Sheree Thomas being dogged by Patterson. Loose ball. McFadden on the deck. But Kentucky got credit for the timeout. Now well, today, uh, we've been talking about the fanfare. We visited it today and stopped by the Pontiac G6 display with the help of the Kentucky Wildcat cheerleaders. There was plenty to cheer about as fans gathered to see the Hey, Kelly Dupree! Yeah! All right! First ever Pontiac G6. Can you believe the size of the panoramic roof on that Pontiac <laughs> GC? Recognized as national champions, yeah. the Wildcat cheerleading squad was awarded $5,000 by Pontiac. By the way, they were right across from me. They, nobody, nobody brought the camera. There she oh, is. That's my girl right there. There she is. The Birmingham, Alabama, Jimmy. I was hoping, you know, I saw them shooting that commercial. Will you be quiet? Doesn't she look pretty? She is a Thank gorgeous you. young Thank lady. You. Friend of uh, friend, your daughter, of, that's Leslie, right. right? Exactly. Yeah, friend of her family. But the Kentucky Cheerleading Squad, 14th national oh, championship I've this got, year. I've actually done some, believe it or not, it, yeah. cheerleading championships. Kentucky's a uh, You're good at it, too. Oh, I've, thank I've you. Heard, I've heard you. I know this is cool. <laughs> it's, it's one of my 26 different sports. <laughs> Sparks oh, with the clock winding down. Boy, what a dagger. How <laughs> sweet is that? You know what the general would have, would have said there? A little string music, Timmy, <laughs> in Lexington, KY. Yeah. Well, it's as uh, close to Lexington KY as you can get. Rough Arena South right here. <laughs> 68 to 54. Another near steal. Kentucky energized. Ty Bell. And the possession arrow is to the Big Blue. James yeah. Patrick Sparks. We talked about him in the open. And a great pass by Chuck Hayes all the way across the lane. Sparks knocks it down. He has been such a great addition to this Kentucky team this year. Doesn't look like a basketball player, but uh, does so many things and leads the team in assists as well. Going up against uh, the SEC assist leader tonight, Watson. That steps by Morris. Uh, over 100 assists for Patrick Sparks. You think of him just as a shooter, a spot-up shooter, but he's also a very effective ball handler, probably underrated in that regard. Yeah, Joe, you can look up at any given time in a game and see different personnel on the floor for Kentucky. And as the rotations go for Tubby Smith, I was discussing this with David Hobbs, his uh, senior associate, longtime head coach, formerly of Alabama. I don't know if there's a better coach in terms of uh, your rotation just being on field than Tubby Smith. I would agree, and again, the great depth helped make those practices so good. We'll be right back after these messages from your local SEC stations. JP Sports exclusive coverage of the 2005 SEC Basketball Tournament is presented by Dr. Pepper and has been brought to you by Dr. Pepper. By your local Toyota dealers by Advance Auto Parts, and by Gatorade. Ah, uh, you can tell there is a buzz in Atlanta tonight. Kentucky is in the house and lead by 14. And Brando along with Jodine Jr. Speaking of uh, buzz, uh, Dave Buzz Baker always on top of what's going on with the Gatorade cooler conversation is all about, and uh, the, the concern coming into the night's game for Kentucky that was there, I think they answered that concern. Well, I don't think there's any question about it. And there was a little concern about uh, Rajon Rondo being injured. You mentioned yeah. the start. Obviously, that has not been a factor at all. He looks good tonight. Chidario Aline has gotten some playing time. He's been here, yeah. The bench, again, continues to do well for Kentucky. McFadden, a little in-between game from him. He has a 13 on the night, 68 to 56. Rondo just glides. I mean, he, he looks so effortless with the basketball. The young man, uh, you mentioned out of Louisville, Kentucky, Tim, just has come into this Kentucky program along with Sparks. I mean, these are two brand new guards in the backcourt for Kentucky. And they lead the Wildcats to a 14-2 record yeah. in the league. Six and two on the road. That's pretty impressive. C.J. Watson just got his third foul, and that's pretty remarkable when you consider the first 19 seconds of this game. Now well, we talked about that. You know, yeah. 
smart players, they, they know how to play with fouls. And that's what Watson did. He stayed away from any uh, tough situations that might get him in trouble. Still defended well, but boys, he, he lit it up offensively in the second oh, half. Did he ever? Tennessee's just kind of hung around. You don't get the feeling that, that maybe they'll win this game, but they've not gone away. Well, Trump had a chance at a follow. Went for a slam. All he had to do was tip it in. They've missed so many easy opportunities, Tim. Tennessee has. This game would be a lot closer if they'd just made some of the easy shots in the lane that Kentucky's given them. Sparks going with a little stop and go in the foul against Lofton. Stay tuned between games. We'll have analysis, interviews, and more all coming up uh, at the break. Presented by Alabama Tourism. And Tim, let's give let's give Tennessee some credit here in the second half. I mean, at halftime, the feeling in this building was they're going to be blown out. It's, it's going to be an ugly game. And they've come back in the second half. Buzz Peterson made some nice adjustments, got the kids' attention. Uh, they played hard. They much better on the offensive end and, and cut into the lead. Actually cut it to nine with the basketball. Here comes another steal. They're still hanging in there. Watson missed a layup. <laughs> oh, that's, that pretty much sums it up, doesn't it? If they had just, the Tennessee would have just made their layups tonight, we might have a, a, a two or three point game. And Tubby Smith is going to take a 30 second timeout. Let's take a look at our Nissan players of the game, C.J. Watson. Now look at this. Now this is a very interesting point. Hayes, understandably, but think about this. Consider it. C.J. Watson, two fouls in his first 19 seconds, leaves the game. He leaves the game at one to nothing. When he comes back, it's 22 to seven. He has 15 second half points. Now, in the time he was out of the game, imagine what Tennessee might have been able to do had he not picked up those two fouls. You know, that's very good, what you did. You worked hard at those numbers, too. Well, Earl, Earl and Pearl over there did it. <laughs> but, you know, Tim, that's a great point. That's I mean, the game. That's I mean, the game, the 15-point spread right yeah. there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you, you can talk about effort and, uh, and energy and, and enthusiasm yep. on the defensive end, but even Tubby Smith mentioned it today at halftime. Look, we saw two early fouls against Watson. We pressed, we took advantage, and that's what gave us the momentum in the first half. No question about it. It just kind of took the wind out of their sails when they lost Watson so early. Nice job, Earl. <laughs> <laughs> and a foul committed by the Volunteers. Goes against uh, Andre Patterson, his fourth. But I think that uh, the pride factor that you were discussing, that Buzz Peterson yeah. got them a bit more focused to play harder on the defensive end, if not better, at least harder. No question about it. And, and you know, for Tennessee, they've got to look at this tournament and look at what's happened to them tonight as they look toward next season, Tim, uh, because there are some good players in this program. Sparks is rejected. Watson tries to save it, but does to Rajon Rondo. And a quick foul given up by Stanley Asunu against Rondo. I don't think that's what Buzz wanted. Don't forget, coming up next, quarterfinal round finale, the Battle of the Tigers, Auburn against LSU. Well, I kind of I like the foul, really. I mean, you're down 12, minute 45. you got to try to get the ball back. This is a 56% foul shooter, mm -hmm. so you fouled the right guy. In fact, we've seen Tubby Smith at times get Rondo out of the game yes. and get Bradley, Bradley in. Bradley who's the better shooter. Yep, too, exactly. Tennessee needs a three or... Three-pointer would be big right here. McFadden trying to launch one against Moss. Good defensive job by him. Watson gets this layup to go down. And a quick timeout taken by Tennessee. So he's got it down to 10 with 127 to play. Tubby Smith, we were talking a little bit about this team. As good as they've been, and they're but they're young, Joe. Yes. I think they're as vulnerable uh, with as gaudy a record I, as I've seen. You know, Kentucky, we're accustomed to seeing, seeing them play 23 and 4, 14 and 2 in the league. 
But you look around and try to find stars, big-time talents, you see a lot of really good college players out there. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, you know, you can remember times in this building when we had Kentucky and, and Arkansas, and maybe there were five or six NBA players on the floor. Well, that, that you used to have to have those types of players to win this conference. Exactly. Frankly, I think it's wonderful to see great college players. Absolutely. That's what this game is supposed to be about. Yeah, and guys like Chuck Hayes who will stay four years. That's right. And help his team have a, you know, a great run. Tennessee trying to come with some pressure once they get the ball in the front court. And you mentioned that Bradley's in for Rondo. Yeah. yeah. And that may have exactly been. We've seen timeouts taken by Kentucky just to make that change. All right. And by the way, that's something Rajon Rondo is going to have to work on in the future. Yes, he is. Take a look at the uh, tournament history. It is absolutely amazing. A period where there are no tournaments, that's the only downtime in their dominance. You know, Tim, they, they've got a pretty good program yeah. there in Kentucky. <laughs> I tell you what, uh, I don't think there's any question about it. Consensus opinion around the Southeastern Conference, Tubby Smith, the best coach in the league, again, mm -hmm. coach of the year this year. Uh, and, and, and really still, I think, a bit underrated huh? nationally. Would you agree? Well, yeah, to be perfectly honest with you, I would I would argue that. I, I think that... Uh, you his respect now? Yeah. You would know that better yeah, than I. Yeah, no, I, I really do think that he gets uh, a lot of national respect. Alabama, their six SEC tournament championships, uh, five of those by Wimp Sanderson. If he had a great one at yeah. Alabama. I think perhaps he's um, he gets a little less respect because his style of play isn't as uh, exciting sometimes as Kentucky fans would like. Lofton gets the deuce. I think his he, every game in his first few years was a referendum versus Rick Latino. I mean, really. That's a good point. It really is. But he's his own man. And, uh, I think they thought for a long time that because he was an assistant to Rick Pitino, he would play a similar style all the time. Now, now you see, saw that right there, the, the interaction with Robbie Moss. They're up 12. They're clearly going to win this game. But he's on Robbie Moss yeah. right there for giving up that drive by Lofton. Constantly teaching yeah. and correcting. Don't forget, coming up next, it's Auburn against uh, LSU. We talked a little bit about uh, last night. I have to give you credit. You had Auburn beating yeah, Vanderbilt I left, did. and uh, their quickness was the difference. They got out to a 21-point lead, held on. You know, they had a halftime lead against LSU on February 27th yep. when we were uh, in there to do that game, and eventually LSU's bigs just took over. What does Auburn have to do tonight against LSU that would be different than Vanderbilt last night? Well, I think they got to change defenses a lot. Uh, you know, and, and Jeff Lebo has done that. You know, start man, go to the zone. They, they run a little zone, Tim, you'll see tonight. You probably saw it last night where they, they set in a 2-3 zone and yeah. on the third pass, they go man to man mm -hmm. and, and try to get you standing a little bit uh, where they can defend the shot and block out. Uh, so I think the changing defenses, they will push the ball and try to get LSU's big men to run the floor. And the other factor, too, is John Brady's got a little bit of a, a, a roller coaster ride at the guard position. Um, Kentucky basketball. You know, sometimes Tack Miner is, is there physically but not mentally. And uh, if they can get him out of sync and maybe Xavier Whipple doesn't play, uh, as much of a role as he did in getting them settled down in their first meeting, then it's advantage Auburn in the backcourt. Yeah, I, well, I definitely would agree with that. I think, you know, the, the, the mismatch with Auburn is they play five guards who can all go out on the floor and drive it and shoot it, and they're tough to defend. But I'll tell you the thing that's been good for John Brady at LSU this year, especially they've won their last six games, yeah. is that when Tack Miner gets a little out of sorts, which we all know he can, very talented young man, they bring Whipple, Whipple in, and, and he gives them that stabilizing yeah. factor that they might need, and, and uh, so they can kind of go either way there. Jordan Howell picked up that foul as a bookie at the free throw line. 15 for him tonight. I think if you look as a senior, Xavier Whipple, who started so many games, the humility of that young man has kept LSU's backcourt situation intact. And he's been really a strong-willed young man to handle that the way he has. Absolutely. Coming in off the yeah, A lot of character and, and the ultimate team player. And that's what you got to have to win a championship, which LSU did this year. Hayes with the rejection. And here comes Sparks trying to get through a double team, and he's fouled by Scooter McFadden. 
You know, it's not often, Tim, that a, a young man like Patrick Sparks uh, you see going transferring from a mid-major program into a BCS level program. <laughs> Throw a little football in there. And uh, especially one that, of the quality of Kentucky. But Patrick Sparks is an uh, unusual and typical Kentucky player who can handle it and shoot it. I think he's been compared, and I don't know if this is fair, but it happens in Kentucky, okay? He's been compared to Travis Ford, and I don't know if, 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 if you necessarily need to go there, but because Travis Ford carried this team two straight years in Southeastern Conference right. in the play. But I think his toughness and the fact that he's Kentucky born and bred has a lot to do with that. You know, I'm going to tell you the guy he reminds me of. That, that was Here's a, uh, Hayes's uh, yeah. nice ovation. Well, ovation. well deserved. The Kentucky people will remember this guy. You probably will, too. You have to go back a ways. But the guy that Patrick Sparks reminds me of, as you see, has a bookie score, is Ronnie Lyons, oh, yeah. who played for Joe B. Hall back in the early 70s. Didn't look like a player, but boy, could he play. And Lamar Bradley picks up the foul on C.J. Watson. By the way, speaking of uh, Joe B., how about his venture into radio with Denny Kentucky? Well, how about that? They have a radio, like Wimp and Sonny. Like Sonny yeah. They're off in Louisville, and they're getting throughout the Commonwealth now. I saw Joe B. at a roast earlier this year that you helped put together uh, for Wimp and, and Sonny. He got up and stole the show. He did. He was, he was amazing. Of course, that was for the American Cancer Society, Coaches versus Cancer. It was a great evening. And, um, by the way, we were talking earlier about guys that are Hall of Fame bound. Three, uh, there's some talk that Jim Calhoun will go in this year from Connecticut, and he's certainly deserving. Howell leads the game. You know, why, why Guy B. Lewis isn't in already, and why Joe B. Hall That's isn't in league. already? Joe B. Joe B. Hall won a national championship, an NIT championship, three Final Fours, and eight SEC championships and is one of the few people in sports history, Tim, to successfully follow a legend. And, Think about that. And by the way, and by the way, did it in 13 years. 13 years as a head coach. Take a look at the uh, AP Top 25, where Kentucky ranks, and again, one of the reasons why they are playing for a number one seed. You know, Alabama's down at 20. LSU's just outside that 25th right. position. I think they've made a move. Most people have them somewhere between 26 and 30, 31 or so. I see, let's talk seeds for a moment. All right. Kentucky wins out, they're a number one seed. No question. I think if I think Kentucky may be number one right now, Tim. I don't know that I could make that statement. Okay. I would disagree with you there. I think they need to win this tournament. The power of this conference is not what it has been in recent years. Well, you, you think they're talking Wake Forest. They lost tonight. So, you know, there's yeah. not a lot of... You know, you got to look at where those bad conference games were for Wake. I mean, they played a lot of tough teams this year. Watson, by the way, has a career high, Joe, 26. Yeah, great game for C.J. Watson. Outstanding tonight for the Tennessee Vols. Here's my point, though. Alabama, a four seed. Yeah, I would say that's right. LSU, a six. Maybe trying to improve on that. Right, six, seven, maybe. Mississippi State, about an eight, nine game. Right? Yes, I would say. So Florida, probably uh, five. five yeah. Yeah. Now you see the uh, two coaches meeting. You can bet Tubby Smith understands the position Buzz Peterson has been in. No one is more well-liked in this business than Buzz. Kentucky's coronation here in Atlanta continues by 76-62 over Tennessee. Uh, yet another uh, exclamation point for the Big Blue. Well, Kentucky won the game in the first half. I mean, let's face it, 18-point uh, first half lead, just kind of went through the motions the second half. Give Tennessee co some credit, though, in the second half. They played very hard. All right, Joe, thanks. Coming up, game two of the SEC quarterfinal round evening session. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of Southeastern Conference basketball from Atlanta for Joe Dean, Tim Brando.